I have to say, and I'm going to be completely frank, because I'm always frank with everybody, <laughs> um, if Boris Johnson was in the final two, you two, who are no longer MPs, we won't go into reasons why, I was going to ask you both, wasn't I, is it possible to come back? We've moved on from that in the short space of an hour. Rishi Sunak, the answer, Simon, yes or no? I think he's, uh, he's welcomed by Labour. I think he's going to be a real problem uh, for the Conservative Party. I think he's going to be a liability. He will help uh, settle the markets, no doubt about that. But in terms of a general election, Labour are going to punch him all around uh, the election. But isn't the calendar. truth that they're probably going to punch... Any Tory leader. Well, yeah, but they would have had a problem with Boris. Would they? B Boris... So the Labour Party didn't want Boris. They, well, ex Told you. Exactly right. And Rishi will go down like a lead balloon in the red wall seats. There is no doubt about that. Not least because... Not, but not just because of his wealth. He's, he's worth £740 million. He makes Boris look like a pauper. Uh, but also, and this is a really important defining point, people voted for Brexit. They wanted sovereignty to come back to the UK. This is not the sort of guy... He's a global capitalist. He's not the sort of guy, Rishi, who is going to deliver that sovereignty back to Britain. Let me ask you, as bring you in as well, Neil. Um, much said, and it's interesting from Simon saying that the Labour Party feared Boris Johnson. There was stuff in the press this weekend that the Labour Party feared Penny Morden. I don't know why. No, I mean, I think you'll find don't, don't, don't write off Rishi at all, because actually, what, why is it we've all of a sudden that the, a man that can actually make money, produce money and understand money, who, who was Chancellor and is now Prime Minister, why is it not wrong for him actually to be running the country? And I think what he will do is stabilise it, because the Tory party, we have torn ourselves to shreds, um, and, and the public have watched us do it, and they want us to actually get oh, well, ourselves together. Oh, well, you want together. unity. Uh, you want unity, yes, Neil. Yes, but, but the country... But, but, uh, no, no, the country... Country needs unity because it's not just about now the Tory party. It's very much about we cannot go on like this because people's mortgage rates are going up because of what this. Why has it taken and to so this therefore, point for the no, Tory party? I still, I still believe. But Rishi is no Boris, is he? I and still believe Rishi, Rishi will, will bring the party. Rishi can't connect with real people. Yes, and that's he his will. Problem. He will no, connect he will. with he real people. No, he won't. He can't do. He can't because, do. Because Whereas you, Boris always could. You would, and that's, you would, you would, that's why Boris did so well. Order! Order! You would say, naturally, that Rishi can't connect. I believe well, it's an he, objective he, he will be able to connect. OK, but let's... let's the, the Neil, 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 is Neil, Neil, a man who Neil. can actually run this country? Yes, but hold on a second. Let, let's look, country. and let's bring Marina and Russell in. Let's look at what we've had, right? Let's forget Liz... I mean, honest to God. We've got Boris Johnson, who was this flamboyant human being who could take those red wall seats and sell a dream and do it, who got slagged off by the Tories for lacking in detail, not being into the finer things of being, you know, financially available or whatever, and a bit of a joke. Now we've got a man, and maybe I'm being disrespectful, who's got... I mean, he's about as exciting, isn't he, as a sticker rock, who apparently is fiscally switched on. Why is there not a politician who's got a personality, can speak to a camera and has an idea how to add up? Am I missing the point? Well, unfortunately, Jeremy, that's the way that uh, the Conservative and the Labour Party select their politicians, isn't it? They don't, they don't want ordinary people, people from good backgrounds. As soon as you get someone, as Neil rightly says, that's got a bit of wealth and a bit of success, the Labour Party turn around and think that that's a bad thing in terms Nonsense. of someone that's successful Nonsense. actually I being qualified got, no, to run the country. I have got country. zero problem with someone who is a billionaire being in power. I have got... The I have rest got of the Labour Party I have got, No, they haven't. You don't speak for the whole Labour Party. Uh, the I have, got a problem. I have got a problem with people having zero compassion, zero understanding for what people are going through being in power. And, and that is reflected in his policies and his priorities. So, where Rishi is going to score is on the economy. And that's where the Conservative Party will come back, I believe, over the next two years. They've got two years for oh, the next election. No, well, this is the election. problem. No, no, Rishi has not a mandate. No, no, and Rishi. That, and there Rishi, will be lots of noise. Rishi will be. And I'm not, you I'm not an advocate two years, of a safe pair of He won't get two years. Can I just finish my point? Can I just finish my point? A, a general election. <laughs> if I just finish my point, Rishi, I'm not in favour of politicians being safe pairs of hands, but if ever we needed a safe pair of hands for this country in terms of its leader and the Conservative Party right now, it is now. Do you think the NHS the markets, is safe with the Rishi? Markets, hang on, let's talk about the economy I, first, because that, I think, the is the most important thing it's in this not country what right people, now. Of course people it is. Are what's if we don't have an economy, is, there will be no NHS. That, exactly. There'll be no tax going into the NHS. It is the economy that matters. It drives remember, public remember sector that comment spending. From Clinton. You, also, this idea that, that Rishi is not compassionate, he was the one that actually sorted out through through the pandemic to make sure that we got furlough and rolled out. And all those and shrunk yeah, the economy. Yeah, shrunk the economy. But, but what would Labour have done? Would they not supported everybody? So, look... And all you're trying to do is to drag out two years. Those are the Labour Party saying that we 
we've borrowed too much because all the Labour Party would do was actually borrow more. Well, I'm, I'm so going to stick, stick my head above the parapet. I'm going to stick my head above the parapet. You've got to get a good, risky government I'm going to stick my head above the parapet. I believe that one of the major problems the Tory party has... I was brought... I'm 57. I was brought up by my mum and dad. They were Conservatives. She used to tell me that the Tories are about fiscal responsibility, yeah. a strong military, a good standing in the world. You cannot, whatever your political persuasion, look at the Tory government and go... We are more in debt than we've ever been. And that is also why, and I hate to say it, they have massive ground to make up on the Labour Party because the Labour Party doesn't have to say anything. Listen, joining us now is a man who said he's a happy man. He'd resign the whip if Boris Johnson returns. Sir Roger Gale, look at the smile on your face, Sir Roger. Good evening. How are you? I'm smiling because I've been listening to Neil, my dear friend Neil, ranting. It's wonderful. Um, Sir Roger, you must be highly delighted that Rishi Sunak is the new Prime Minister. Uh, he'll be officially sworn in tomorrow. Is he the right man to get the Tory party back, my friend? Yes, absolutely. Look, I, I back Penny Morden, but we've got to, we're, going to, I think we're going to have a great team. We'll have Rishi as the Prime Minister. Penny Morden will be in there, I'm sure, in high office. We've got Jeremy Hunt as the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Ben Wallace overseeing the war in Ukraine, the top team is suddenly going to change in a big way. Yeah, we're back on track. Um, interestingly, you talk about the top team. I read that uh, James Heapy, of course, the defence minister, who I've spoken to many times, both he and Ben Wallace have said that if the spend on the military goes below, I think, 3%, they couldn't serve. Um, Rishi Sunak has not committed to that. What will happen if he turns around and says we've got to make cuts in the military? Will Wallace and Heapy walk out in the first week? We're not going to cut defence spending in the middle of a war. Come on, let's be sensible about this. We've got to make some savings. We might be able to make some efficiency savings. That's rather different, but we're not going to cut spending right, on defence. Right, two questions, Sir Roger, and I love having you on. On the spot, you've got to make savings. Marina's going to talk about austerity number two. Where do you make the savings? Where do you replace that money? I think, in fact, and I know this is candle ends, but if you add up all those candle ends, you make a candle. There are savings to be made right across the board. I'm not suggesting for one moment, for example, we should cut spending on health. But don't tell me that within the health operation, the health business, there isn't a lot of money that's wasted that could be saved and better spent. So apart from anything else, what we've got to do is make sure we get a decent bang for every buck of taxpayers' money we spend. I'm going to throw this in. Marina's going to shake her head. I have a friend whose wife is a nurse. She opened a packet of 60 paracetamol in an accident and emergency department of a hospital the other day, gave a patient two and had to throw away the other 58 because she wasn't a pharmacist. Maybe you're right. The next question is nailed on, Sir Roger. And bear in mind that Richie Sunak, our new Prime Minister, said this. Is there a role for Boris Johnson? Um, well, <laughs> you can say that could be arranged, but over my dead body. Richie Sunak said... I believe there's a role. A lot of people are talking about maybe something to do with Ukraine. Um, look, I'm not the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister's the Prime Minister. Um, I'm merely heartily relieved that the man who I believe was totally unfit to hold that office is not going to hold that office ever again. I'm quite certain of that. Um, I mean, there are jobs. Uh, Steve Baker, who I don't always agree with, um, said the other night, well he'd make a good party chairman. Well, if you don't cons you're not too concerned about the, um, the veracity of your party chairman, then actually, as a rabble-rouser, as a, as a crowd whipper-upper, as a party conference, you know, fun speaker, um, he, is, he has actually... I mean, he's got a talent. There's no, no, no two ways. You can't deny that. Uh, he is an entertainer. My problem is that I believe that the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom should have a reasonably close relationship with the truth. Sir Roger Gale, it's always a pleasure, never a chore. Thank you for joining us very quickly. You, Neil Parrish, think Rishi Sunak... And I mean quickly, Neil. You think Rishi Sunak should be given time and he can succeed? He will. He will, he will get this com uh, economy straight um, and he'll bring back confidence to, the, to, the, to the, the, the markets and also people will believe that the Conservatives can actually run an economy. If we can't run an economy, we are not a Conservative party. So if he doesn't get that right, we are completely finished. Whether so we will win the next election or not is beside the point. We've got to get through uh, and get people... The cost sure. of living crisis... Simon, or I, think you, I, I, I think you've proven... I think you've, I think you've proven that you can't run the economy. Rishi hasn't got a man 
mandate, there's got to be a general ele election. Rubbish. But Labour must start being stronger Go and firmer Gordon on their Brown. policies. Gordon Brown didn't have a mandate. He, sa he saved the economy Gordon, across Go the world. Gordon are you Brown two, did are not you two have both a mandate looking, are you and hang there. Shut up, man. Are you hankering <laughs> for a return? Certainly not. No. Are you hankering for a return? Yes, no. you are, Paris. Well, we'll think about it. <laughs> uh, Marina, general election, yes or no? 100%. Yes. Absolutely not. People need a say.